right, so as we start chapter 8 today, we're going to be specifically talking about linear. So you noticed in our scatter plot, we're looking for shapes, and our favorite shape to see will be a line. So what I, what I have up here is our scatter plot. It should look familiar. This was the number of faces from Go in Monopoly versus the cost. And we ended up with this rather strong linear relationship. So it will come up at some point every year. Students will start saying, okay, Miss Curtis, you say it looks like a line, but where's the line? Like, is this the line? Sorry for my lack of perfectly straight drawing. Or would it be maybe a little bit more like this? Or, you know, maybe it, there's those points down there I didn't touch, so maybe it's that. Which line is like the line? That, that's my question, which line? So we're going to be looking at that today. Like, where is that line? So I have lots and lots and lots of choices for where to draw a line. So I need to define a word to explain where the best line comes from. And that line, uh, excuse me, that word is residual. Residual. This is going to be very important, very important. Residual. The residual is, uh, when we're thinking in terms of the y variable, the observed minus the predicted. So, for example, here is a data point. This is something that actually happened. I, I really observed this, I don't know, data point that's 10 comma 7. But when I put a line in, like we see here, there's some difference. So that difference, this distance right here, is the residual. What happens when I observe this, but my line says, well, it should have been here, right here. That gives me a, res a residual. Kind of same thing over here. I observed this, but according to my line, I should have been here. So that little distance between is the residual. Again, here's an observation, but according to my my line, I should have been up here. So that distance is the residual. Well, some really awesome people using calculus, again, well, thank you calculus, gave us a lot of our stats. They were able to create a way that we could minimize, minimize these residuals. If we think about it, minimizing residuals is good. That means all of my data points are close to the line, okay, close to the line. That means my line is a good model or picture for my data. So the smaller my residuals are, that means the closer my line is to my real data. So that's how we get the best line, or some people call it the line of best fit. It's the line that has the smallest residuals, or squared residuals. Uh, so there is actually a uh, very fun and exciting formula that could do that, but um, I don't think that sounds particularly interesting, learning a horrific formula. So we're going to get it from our calculator. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that. So back on our lovely calculator, we've actually been here before, I just didn't tell you. We're going to go to stat, we're going to go to calculate, and we're going to run what's called a lin reg. Let me write that down. Lin reg. Lin stands for linear. Notice I said linear would be very important. And reg is this word called regression, which is this process of creating the line of best fit. So on your calculator, you'll notice there is a lin reg at number four. And there is also a lin reg on number eight, and the only difference is this AX plus B or A plus BX. Your book always uses option number eight, so I will do the same. Know that number four and number eight will give you the same answer, but in a different order. So it might be convenient if you use the same option that I use. So I'll be using number eight. So if I push enter, I just need to tell my calculator, hey, where is my data? Right, I, I have to have data <laughs> in order to make a line. So I'm going to be using the same data set that we've been talking about, the Monopoly data set. Uh, just to remind you, my data is in L5, L6. Take a moment, make sure you know where yours is so you can follow along on the calculator. So I'm going to say L5, 
comma L6. Make sure you go in order. It should be X comma Y on the variable. And ta-da! I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, um, Ms. Curtis, that's not a line. Well, actually it is. Um, so <laughs> let me show you how that is a line. Here is the information that I got from my calculator. This right here is the equation of a line. Remember from algebra class, y equals mx plus b. We've just reorganized it a little bit. They write it y equals a plus bx. Okay, so they use slightly different letters. They put it in a different order, but it's still the equation of a line. Remember, the number in front of the x is the slope of your line. And the one that's by itself, a constant, is the y-intercept. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use A right here. That's A. And I'm just going to fill it in. And B, I'm going to fill it in. So this is going to give me Y equals my A is 67.28. And I'm not going to write all those decimals. Two decimal places is fine. Plus B, 6.78X. Now I know you were wanting like a line like a line. <laughs> so I'll show that to you. But this is what we need for this class, is actually the equation of the line, the name of the line. Now, just because you're curious, I went ahead and I plugged that equation into my calculator, um, just regular graphing. And uh, you can see that line running right through my point. That is the best line, or line of best fit. All right, so one last thing I want to mention about the line is um, the way I wrote it before is actually not accurate. I wrote y equals 67.28 plus 6.78x. Um, that's great in algebra class, but we're not in algebra class anymore. We're in stats class, and in stats, we use variable names and not letters. If I looked at that, I have no idea what y and x are. So I'm going to actually fill in y and x with their names. So um, just to refresh your memory, like we might go back to the beginning of chapter 7 where we defined that x was our explanatory variable. This was the number of spaces. And y was the cost. So I would just write it this way, cost, excuse me, give myself just a little bit more space, cost equals 67.28 plus 6.78 times the number of spaces. Wow, this suddenly is a much more powerful equation. I can figure out what we're talking about just from reading it. But sadly, this is still not an A plus answer. Um, it, it needs what's called a hat. A hat sounds really silly. Um, I want to remind you that this equation of the line is, is not perfect. Okay, let's go back to where we saw earlier. Right? I mean, I have data points that are not on the line, right? I have this residual or the space in between. Space in between. A line is not perfect. It gives us an idea of what's happening with the data. That's why I call it a model. But it's not a perfect representation. So in my equation, I want to acknowledge that my equation is not perfect. If I know the number of spaces, I can get a guess for the cost. But it's not going to be right on. So we would say that it's the predicted cost. Or my favorite way to write predicted is to put what's known as a hat on top of the y variable. So this, I know you're, you, Ms. Curtis, that's a carrot. Uh, sure, but it's also known as a hat. I didn't make up the name. And a hat stands for predicted. So this is the way of acknowledging that my model is not perfect. It's just giving me a rough idea of what's happening with my data.